Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at the ear, the basic structure of the ear and how we're able to use it to perceive sound. So we're going to talk about the parts, what they do and how a sound is transmitted from an external stimuli essentially and how it's perceived by our brains. Now the ear is a perfect example of a mechanoreceptor in action. And by mechanoreceptor I mean one in the body that's triggered by movement because vibrations in the air ultimately get converted to action potentials so nerve impulses so let's go from the beginning and we'll work our way from outside to in so it starts with this structure here that is called the pinna so this outer earlobe that we see or the pinna basically collects those sound waves and those sound waves pass we'll put it we'll color it in red they pass down this tube here now this region in our ear is known as the external auditory meatus now at key stage four is it's, not often required to that level of detail but we're just going to put it in in this video for completeness sake so the sound waves are collected by the pinna they pass down this what appears to be this tube called the external auditory meatus and they reach the eardrum now the eardrum is vibrated by air pressure changes due to the sound waves so let's put the eardrum in place we'll color this in blue here, the eardrum is this part here. So this here is our eardrum, also known as the tympanic membrane. So you have the eardrum here, and that eardrum is vibrated by air pressure changes due to the sound waves. So let's put in, I think we'll put numbers to suggest the order. So number one, the sound waves are collected by the pinna. We have them passing down the external auditory meatus. Two, to reach the eardrum, which then will vibrate because of those air pressure changes. Then what that does is stimulate the middle ear bones. This region that I'm highlighting, just draw a sort of dash line from down here to about here. This area is known as the middle ear. that's the middle ear region. Over to the left of this, this is the outer and clearly across here this would be the inner ear region. So just looking at the middle ear. Now what actually happens is that once that eardrum starts vibrating it causes a knock-on vibration effect. So the middle ear bones get stimulated by the eardrum and start to knock against each other and they actually magnify the sound about 20 times to what it actually is so that middle ear or oh, that eardrum vibrates and passes that vibration onto the middle ear bones which are stimulated which enhance that sound by about 20 times so let's look at those middle ear bones individually because we've noticed we've actually got three we've got one here and this one here is known as the malleus we've got one here which we refer to as the incus and this small one there that is the state now sometimes they're referred to as the just colloquially or in general terms as the hammer anvil and stirrup but they are the middle ear bones and they're the proper scientific names from the malleus, the incus and the state. And the vibrations pass, you can see, from the eardrum to the malleus. That will vibrate, pass that on to the incus and on to the state. Then we have the oval window. The oval window transmits vibrations from the middle ear bones to the cochlea. So let's put this oval window in place. Now this oval window is this sort of darker blue sort of purple region here so we're going to put this in in red that's our oval 
window. So it's located about there. And the job of that oval window, as I said, is to transmit vibrations from those middle ear bones. Now, I just want to label, although they're not part really of this, these loops that we see here, just where I've put the purple asterisks, you can see they, they look almost like semicircles. They are called the semicircular canals. They're involved in balance, not hearing. So whilst I, I will label them, they're not part of this hearing process. So these are the semi circular canals. They're found in the inner ear, but they're not part of hearing. They're part of um, the way that we balance. So let's pick up. So we had the eardrum vibrate. That passed those vibrations, number four, to the middle ear bones. That then got passed to the oval window. That's our fifth step there. Now, at that oval window, we said that we would transmit those vibrations to the cochlea. So let's put the cochlea in place. The cochlea is this whole region here. That's the cochlea. Now, tiny hairs respond to individual wavelengths of sound. So there are tiny hairs along the cochlea that once triggered, and I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video about what happens in the cochlea, but when those tiny hairs respond to wavelengths of sound, they generate what are called action potentials. Basically, action potentials allow for nerve impulses to be transmitted. So when those tiny hairs in the cochlea act as receptors, if you like, for those wavelengths of sound, we get an action potential generated in the cochlea, and that nerve impulse will get transmitted to the brain via what's called the auditory nerve. So let's put the auditory nerve in place. So the auditory nerve, in fact, I'll label this in blue just to make it a little bit more distinct. The auditory nerve, what's this portion here? So we have the auditory nerve and the auditory nerve as I said, so that would be number six, would pass on that nerve impulse of that action potential, if you like, to the brain as a result of those tiny hairs in the cochlea recepting or receiving those individual wavelengths of sound. So once that auditory nerve transmits the action potential to the brain, all that's left is this one part here and it's quite tricky to see i colored in red the oval window and i said it the oval window sort of adjoins the stakes mode but you have a sort of circle region here and that there is what we call the round window so there's an oval window and there's a round window and the job of that round window is to dissipate the sound. So that round window dissipates those vibrations. It sort of dampens those that used sound stimulus, if you like, to prevent damage to the ear. Now, I mean, I've not labeled on here, but coming down and I'll just draw the arrow in red again, this tube here, whilst I won't fully label on the diagram, that's the Eustachian tube, E-U-S-T-A-C-H-I-A-N, Eustachian tube, and that actually joins the throat and sinus, and that's for the equalisation of pressure. So we'll put it in here, but in terms of the hearing story, if you like, we're going to end at that round window. So just to recap, we had the pinna collecting the sound waves. That in turn will carry those sound waves down the external auditory meatus to the eardrum, which vibrates as a result of air pressure changes because of the sound waves. We stimulate the middle ear bones, the malleus, incus and cochlea, which enhance that sound. 
The oval window will transmit vibrations from the middle ear bones to the cochlea. Then the tiny hairs in the cochlea will act as receptors for individual wavelengths of sound. That will generate an action potential in the cochlea, which is transmitted by the auditory nerve. And we finish with the round window, which will help to dissipate sound. That's just a little short video about the ear, the basic structure of the ear, and how we hear. Okay, hope all that helps.